The story starts with a man and a woman wearing kimonos and silently walking by a river. Eventually, they crossed a bridge and kept walking until they reached a specific point in the waterway. At that moment, the man pointed out the river's rapids and said that that river was a real man eating one. The woman then got closer to him to the point of touching his shoulder with her head and, after calling him sensei, told him it was time for them to go together to which he agreed. Right after, they both tied their hands together using a red cord and he declared, after calling her Seiken, that they would be together forever from that moment onwards. However, before they could do or say anything else, a truck appeared and hit them both. Wow, there wasn't even a road there. Truck Kun really takes his work seriously. Anyway, I digress. On that day, a certain great author and his lover left that world. Our protagonist woke up in what seemed to be a church, and he concluded that that was the world people went to after they died. In fact, he even highlighted that it was a western-styled place. At that moment, a woman who looked like an elf priestess appeared and told him that that was not the world after death. She then welcomed him and introduced herself as the guide of those who descended upon that world. Her name was Annette. She also explained to him that he was in a different world from the one he had come from. They both walked towards a window and he could see a dragon flying outside while she told him that he had been chosen and transported there to that land enclosed in darkness which was called Zauberberg. Annette then indicated that his mission was for him to become a hero who brought light to that world. However, his reaction was unusual. Instead of panicking or getting excited, he kept his undaunted demeanor and just wanted to double-check if after failing to kill his lover and himself, he had been taken to that strange world. After Annette confirmed it, he only said his life had been shameful. The priestess then was about to tell him the details of his mission, but before she could say anything he took several sedative pills in another attempt to take his life, which panicked the woman. However, the priestess thought fast and used purifying magic to save him. Almost immediately, he woke up and without losing his composure, he told her that she didn't need to do that. In fact, he added that she was bothering him and asked her to stop. Nevertheless, the woman didn't listen to him. She reprimanded him and reaffirmed that he would become a hero who would fulfill his great mission of saving that world. Unfortunately for her, he replied that he didn't care about that and added that he was just looking for a place to die. He then began to take more pills, which panicked the priestess again. The woman then asked him why he was doing that after being chosen by that world. He laughed at her and told her he hadn't asked to be chosen, but the priestess asked him back if he hadn't been visited by a truck, which he confirmed. She then explained that the truck was the other world selection truck. Wow, Truck Kun is canon in this story. Among the many people in our protagonist's old world who lived unhappy lives, only those struck by that truck got to redo their lives in that world. That was the service they provided. By the way, while she tried to sell him how marvelous had been the opportunity given to him, he kept taking sedative pills as if they were candy. Nevertheless, once the priestess finished, he got close to her, grabbed her staff, and told her that the truck had interfered with what was meant to be the happiest moment of his life. He then asked her who they were to decide if someone was unhappy or not. He then began to smoke. As for the priestess, she couldn't believe his attitude. She thought that he had been saved from an unhappy life, yet he was acting that way. Right after, she showed him his stats in an attempt to cheer him up. After all, without exception, every human taken to that world was granted the ability to wield superhuman powers. Sadly, his stats were almost zero. He was so weak that even after being detoxified he was still showing the poison status. She then began to panic and quickly search through all his status windows only to confirm he was extremely weak. He then tried to leave, but she grabbed his hand and apologized since it seemed that he had indeed been taken to that world by mistake. In fact, he was not fit to live in that world. However, he simply <laughs> smiled at her and replied that that had been the story of his life. She then offered him to stay at the church for a while because he was too weak to survive outside. 
but he rejected her and decided to leave. At that moment, she finally realized he was indeed a different man. Up to that moment, she had closed her heart to the chosen ones because their attitude was awful in short. They were all douchebags, so she simply flattered them again and again. Nevertheless, that time was different. He had indeed touched her. She then tried to stop him by asking him to at least choose a profession before leaving, and he replied that he already had one, writer. Afterward, she complimented her ears and left. What he didn't know was that with his actions he had confirmed to her that he was the man she had been waiting to arrive. Some time later, he was walking on a prairie while eating his candy when a voice in his head told him that he had gained five experience points for discovering the Great Plains of Erston, and of course that annoyed him since he suffered from migraines. Sadly, the system didn't care about it and informed him that he had leveled up, so he was level two at that moment. Right after, he heard the scream of a catwoman and found that she had been attacked by a death tree. She then recognized him as an adventurer and asked him for his help. He looked at her and realized that had been meeting people with oddly shaped ears that day. He also thought that dying women were certainly beautiful. He then asked her if he could write a novel based on her. That pissed the woman off and she urged him to save her. He then tried to reach her, but she was being held too high, which led to a very awkward moment. She then asked him if he had a sword or some spells or something. Immediately thereafter, the tree caught him by the neck and he found it funny being asphyxiated, which in turn exasperated the woman. She even called him useless disgusting bastard. On the other hand, he was enjoying that moment since he was finally dying. Those trees had the suction skill that allowed them to steal life force from their captives. Unfortunately for everybody, except the woman of course, by sucking our protagonist's life force the tree got poisoned and died before it could kill its captives. Our protagonist then lamented having survived and the system informed him he had inflicted 300 points of damage due to his poison, rising one level. He was level 3 at that moment. As for the Catwoman, she couldn't believe how he had killed the tree. She even said he had been just pretending to be weak to trick the monster, to which he replied that he was just a man who had wished for death and yet he had survived. In fact, he had tried five times to no avail up to that moment. She then tried to cheer him up by inviting him to her place as a way to thank him for saving her life. However, when she took his hand, he looked at the red cord and finally thought of Sakin. He then wondered if she had also gone to that world. He walked away while ignoring the Catwoman's attempts to tell him her name. He was too busy thinking that he had just found a reason to live in that whimsical other world. He would find Sakin so they could finally die together. Meanwhile, at the church, the priestess was praying to the gods of that world so they protected that adventurer and allowed them to meet again someday. At that moment, our protagonist opened the door of the church, which made the priestess very happy. Nevertheless, when she was running to hug him, the Catwoman appeared behind him asking why they had gone to that place. The priestess froze after seeing the Catwoman since she didn't know who she was, but before she could say anything, our protagonist, who liked to be called Sensei, told her he had a question for her. Right after, he said he was looking for a woman named Sakin and asked her if she had any idea of where she might be. That question shocked the priestess because it implied the existence of another woman in his life. Sadly, the priestess knew nothing, and he left the church with the catwoman thinking he didn't have any leads to find Sakin. The catwoman then tried to cheer him up and told him that since they've still got a way to go to her place, they should stop by the castle town of Roth. She then tried to grab his hand, but the priestess suddenly appeared and hit her with her staff. She then reprimanded the Catwoman for being shameless by holding a man's hand in public. The Catwoman then asked her why she had decided to go with them, before teasing her saying that she was in love with Sensei. That startled the priestess who tried to justify her actions saying that as a clergy person, she had a responsibility to protect that weak otherworlder. 
The Catwoman was surprised by knowing he was from another world, but quickly clarified that he was strong because he had Insta killed a death tree to save her. The priestess couldn't believe that he had gotten that close to another woman and panicked. After all, saving someone's life was a big deal. As for the sensei, he had finally found a nice place to take a nap, a coffin that someone had left in a pile of garbage. He then asked the women to wake him up when they arrived at their destination, and the priestess immediately took a rope to pull the coffin there. Meanwhile, in a castle, a pink-haired lady looked at the lake in front of her while keeping a sad expression. The priestess and the cat woman were making a huge effort to pull the coffin, with our protagonist inside, by using two ropes. You could see they were very tired because it was too heavy. In fact, the cat woman couldn't take any more and yelled at the sensei since he could walk on his own two legs. However, there was no response and the cat woman even suspected he might be dead, but the priestess quickly checked his status window and confirmed he was okay. She then suggested to keep going since they were already near the castle. By the way, due to our protagonist having called the cat woman Tama, Annette kept doing the same despite knowing it wasn't her name because she wanted to tease her. As for the sensei, he was thinking of Sakin and swore to himself he would find her so they could kill themselves together. Some time later, they arrived at their destination, the castle town of Roth, and Tama opened the coffin while waking our protagonist up. He quickly left the coffin and after seeing everything around couldn't help but be convinced that he was indeed in another world. Wow, the people of that town are really tough. They saw a person waking up from a coffin in the middle of a crowded street and they barely reacted. Right after, Annette suggested going to the castle and having an audience with the king. Afterward, they met with the king who kindly welcomed them. He introduced himself as Thomas and his daughter, Princess Charlotte, did the same. He then offered them to rest that night in the castle's bedchambers, which was very well received by the women. Although the king agreed to that on one condition, he wanted to hear travelers' stories because he loved them very much. After hearing that, the sensei smiled and asked if he could tell them how it felt to sleep in a coffin. Of course, that startled the king who even thought our protagonist might be threatening him. Luckily, Annette quickly stepped in and complimented the princess beauty. That lightened the mood, and the king happily told her that her daughter was going to get married soon. He even asked them for advice regarding that matter. Immediately thereafter, he introduced Gomez, the valiant warrior, and Otto, the wandering minstrel of love, to the travelers. The king then explained that perhaps due to the influence of the wrathful Dark Lord, monster activity had increased in recent times. Nevertheless, he had grown too old to deal with that problem. So he had decided that one of those two would become Charlotte's husband and the next king. The problem was that Charlotte hadn't chosen a candidate yet, so he asked the travelers who was the more suitable husband for Charlotte. The sensei then stopped eating his candy and with a solemn demeanor replied that he had no idea, which startled the king. However, our protagonist didn't stop there. He said that Charlotte's future hinged on that critical choice, so the king shouldn't be taking advice on that matter from travelers who had just arrived that day. He also said that the king was horrible and a tyrant. Heck, he even added that Thomas was not fit to be a king. Well, at least he admitted that since he was not fit to live in that world, he had no right to say that. The sensei left after that, and both the priestess and the cat woman began to apologize to the king for his behavior. They said that since he was an otherworlder he might be a bit rash. Luckily, the otherworlder thing was enough to appease the king. By the way, while they were talking, the princess couldn't help but stare at our protagonist until he left the throne room. That night, our protagonist was in one of the rooms looking at the moon through a window, when the priestess woke up and asked him if he was having trouble sleeping. They were sleeping in separate beds, in case you wondered, he turned his head to look at her in the eye and replied that he never slept well. Those words hit her hard, and after a pause, she finally asked him who was Sakin. Unfortunately, before he could answer, the priestess noticed that Tama was sleeping under our protagonist's blankets. 
The cat woman was even resting her head on his thighs. That was too much for Annette who hit the other with a pillow and began reprimanding her. Both women kept fighting for a while and the sensei took advantage of the chaos to leave the room unnoticed. He then began to wander through the corridors of the castle and eventually met Charlotte who was looking at the lake with the same sad expression as before. He got closer to her and told her it was a nice view. She agreed and they both began to contemplate the lake and the moon's reflection on its surface. However, he quickly killed the mood by saying that it made him want to drown himself. Obviously, that startled the princess who asked him if he was so troubled that he wished to kill himself. But he only scoffed at her and replied that it seemed to him that she was more troubled than him. She went silent, but after a while, he said that she still couldn't choose between Mr. Gomez and Otto. On the one hand, Mr. Gomez was already the most dependable of their soldiers, and the king had faith in his strength as well. For that reason, she should probably choose him. On the other hand, Otto was her childhood friend. Whenever she felt down, he wrote songs and went to sing them to her. In the end, she didn't know what to do. He then laughed a little and said that, unlike him, she was a truly kind girl who cared for her father. He also added that his life had been a continuous series of troubles. In fact, he had attempted to kill himself and die with someone else numerous times, which inconvenienced his father and family greatly. However, he made clear that he had never once asked anyone else to choose how he should live for him. In the end, she should decide for herself what she would do, and for that, she should ask herself what she truly wanted. He left after saying that, but those words resonated deeply with the princess. The next day, the king summoned the travelers again to the throne room where he was along with the princess, Otto, and Mr. Gomez. The reason was that Charlotte had finally chosen who she would marry, so he wanted the travelers to act as witnesses. Annette and Tama placed their bets and argued a little since they were supporting different candidates. And right after the king asked Charlotte to stand before the man she had chosen and spoke her vows. She then went towards our protagonist, took his hand, and declared that she wanted to die together with him. Of course, that astonished everybody. Heck, even the priestess passed out after declaring there was no god. Charlotte then explained that after talking to the sensei she had realized that she didn't want to marry any of the candidates because they both had things that annoyed her. Obviously, the king couldn't accept that and tried to force her to choose a husband. In fact, he took her decision worse than the candidates themselves. The princess then reprimanded his father because he wanted her to get married without asking her opinion. In the end, nobody had considered her feelings, except for our protagonist. Nevertheless, before they could keep talking, Mr. Gomez removed his armor and revealed himself as a minotaur. A <laughs> a servant of the wrathful Dark Lord. He then confessed he had intended to acquire that kingdom by becoming its king and then offering it to the Dark Lord. The worst part for the Minotaur was that he had blown out his cover due to a misunderstanding. He had thought the princess had seen through his disguise, but she simply didn't like him. Sadly, he couldn't back down at that point, so he decided to kill everybody. Some soldiers arrived after hearing the commotion, but the Minotaur easily defeated them. Right after, Tama stopped trying to wake up the priestess and faced the Minotaur. After all, she was a level 14 martial artist. Otto, as a level 89 wandering minstrel, began to sing a song with his harp and Tama thought she would receive some buffs, but nothing happened, except for our protagonist being entranced by the melody. The battle continued, but Tama was unable to hurt the Minotaur. On the contrary, he had already wounded her with his horns. He even declared that he would kill her with his next attack. Nevertheless, before he could act, the sensei interrupted him and asked if he could kill him and the princess first. That caught the minotaur by surprise, even the princess didn't see that coming, but he calmly explained that both of them wished to die. The minotaur laughed and replied he would grant them their wish. He also added that afterward, he would burn the city to the ground, killing every last citizen of that kingdom. 
The sensei then said that there was no problem with that. After all, since they were about to die, nothing mattered to them. Charlotte began to tremble, but our protagonist ignored it, and the Minotaur launched his attack. Right after, as the princess faced death for real, Charlotte realized she didn't want to die, but to live and protect the people of that kingdom. After hearing her words, our protagonist acknowledged her true desire and told her that he knew she was a kind princess. He then pushed her away while saying that she was not fit to share that moment with him. Unfortunately for the sensei, Annette had finally woken up and created a barrier to block the attack while saying that she wouldn't let him die as long as she was by his side. As a level 18 priestess, her barrier was strong enough to break the Minotaur's horns. Immediately thereafter, Tama delivered the finishing blow with a skill attack and sent the Minotaur through the wall directly to the lake. Afterward, both Annette and Tama thanked each other and buried the hatchet. Right after, the king kneeled before her and apologized for what he had done. Charlotte forgave him, and they both cried together out of happiness. Later, Thomas abdicated the throne, and a 16-year-old Charlotte was crowned queen. As for the trio, Tama and Annette resumed their sacred task of pulling the sensei's coffin while he rested in peace inside. Both women were wondering if Charlotte would be okay, but our protagonist quickly said that they had nothing to worry about because it had been a decision she had made for herself. He then opened the coffin, and while looking at the castle in the distance he said that although dying women were certainly beautiful, those who stood up on their own two feet were beautiful too. Some time later, on a rainy night, an injured Annette arrived at a church, but when a fellow priestess tried to help her, she managed to ask her to help her companion instead. The other priestess then took a look at the man beside her and clenched her teeth after realizing he was badly wounded. Right after, she asked to get every healing potion they had, and to summon every priest present. Watch this next video on screen and subscribe to not miss next part.